Treatment pathways, therefore, will have a physical, to call it in a way, branch, but also there will be a psychological dimension. With regards to the psychological dimension, uh, we would be primarily uh, led by the guidance and expertise of clinical psychologists uh, who are uh, working in close cooperation with uh, specialist physiotherapists will attempt to increase the function by reducing the psychological distress and empowering the sufferers with the appropriate tools in order to uh, allow them to progressively build up their stamina and their exercise tolerance. This can sometimes help to a sufficient degree to allow them some restoration of normality, but often this is not sufficient. In which case, we have the second dimension of treatments which try to deal more with the physical aspects of the pain. Uh, the physical aspects of the pain can be treated pharmacologically with antineuropathic agents, with perhaps escalation to opioid interventions, and it can also be treated with uh, injections. Sometimes uh, a sympathectomy can improve the blood flow to reduce the stump pain, perhaps ulceration uh, around the stump that can be of a sufficient improvement to reduce or not to eliminate the overall um, array of symptoms that they describe. These type of interventions do not directly treat phantom pain as such, but it can reduce the severity uh, that um, the symptoms are reported and it can also bring down the limitation that these patients suffer. Other interventions a bit simpler can involve just the simple application of a, a patch of local anesthetic within the stump to reduce the excitation of the nerve supply. But by and large, uh, because the problem uh, that seems to be associated with the development of phantom limb sensation and phantom limb pain is more of a central nature, the majority of interventions with regards to uh, invasive treatments would offer a limited uh, result that, uh, as I understand it, is unlikely to be beyond a coadjuvant effect and very unlikely to be the treatment of choice. So overall, the treatment would be primarily down the physical and psychological rehabilitation route with some pharmacological support. There are some other interventions that over the years I have found beneficial. Um, and those would involve the use of a stronger, perhaps more specific, uh, centrally acting uh, painkillers, uh, such as uh, infusions of uh, local anesthetic and uh, oral or intravenous infusions of uh, ketamine, both of which will act within the spinal cord and the central nervous system to try and produce analgesia. Those in patients for whom there are no contraindications can offer a significant advantage uh, in the management of the sensation of pain that can aid uh, greatly to the benefit, the benefits of a physical and a psychological rehabilitation. I have used these lines of treatment with many patients uh, over the years. Um, and I have also uh, used uh, the uh, more rehabilitative approach with all uh, of the patients that I have seen uh, with these conditions. 